All right, here we are on a rainy day here in Virginia. So I'm inside, uh, I've got lures in here. I've got lures in front of me, but I'm gonna show you the top three bass fishing lures that I pay money out of my pocket. My, my money comes out of my pocket right here to buy fishing lures. This is non-sponsor related uh, fishing lures. These, these are lures that none of my sponsors or any company that I'm really affiliated with have anything to do with but these are ones that i definitely use and need to compete on the bassmaster elite series tour so here we go i'm going to give you my top three i'm going to give you a couple of honorable mentions one's not technically a lure but it's something that uh, i've really started using a lot and i really like so i'm going to show that to you guys as well but number one number one is the one i've probably been using the longest i'm going to show you the z-man jackhammer this is the jackhammer it is a chatterbait it is a vibrating jig it is a bad dude right there um, i think this one and this one were two of the ones that i used when i won the st john's river the bassmaster elite series earlier in, in 2022 uh, but i use a combination of of trailers kind of depending on what i want to do with it now this is a missile bait shockwave 3.5 if i want to if i want to have that chatterbait be really erratic when i reel it i want it to really kick and be real wild this is this is what i'll, I'll use that's when i want to i want to when i'm trying to trigger fish like around grass around areas where i might rip it and then let it fall that's when i'm going to go to the that smaller you can see it's a small bait uh, it has less resistance than like bigger, bulkier uh, little swim baits you can put on the back. So it really helps that thing dance and kind of kick and be erratic. That's when I really like that. When I want a bigger wild, like a bigger profile, I go, I just put a full size D-bomb on there and I put it straight up. I'll trim a little bit of the ribs off so you get a good, nice, good bite right there. But that's another thing that I do. Uh, I put that chatter, that that D-bomb and those, those flappers on that D-bomb look look really good but that's a big bulky uh, that's when i want to keep it up and it's not going to be near as erratic uh, but then there's a third option which is actually a combination of um and it's kind of a preview if you will as well uh just for you guys we'll keep it hush hush until we formally announce it but here is a it's a jackhammer with the the hog farmer spunk shad on the back and that is a heck, 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 heck of a combination. It is a, it's kind of a catch-all. It's kind of an in-between. It, it's still, it, it's got some, some resistance to it, but it still allows that chatterbait to be a little bit erratic. And with that skinny little pin tail, that thing just, it just wags and kicks on the back. Uh, unlike a boot tail or unlike a, the, the D-bomb, which is really wild, this is a little more subdued but man it just it just kind of quivers and it looks really nice in the water uh, if you guys haven't tried that that is is really really good but that is something that may not be something i have to purchase uh, in the future so stay tuned stay tuned keep your ears out uh, because that may be something uh, that may be maybe coming from something i have a little something to do with so that's a little sneak peek right there um, more colors more colors coming as well that'll help match up with that wonderful jackhammer but that jackhammer definitely number one for me on fishing lures that i buy that i have to have in order to compete on the bassmaster elite series number two is right here it is the whopper plopper and i just love saying it uh, it's the river to see that's the original uh the chapo is good but man, I have just started with the uh, with the the Whopper Plopper. This is the 110. I've probably thrown the 110 more than than the others. I like the 130. The 130 has its place when you're really trying to call fish up from things. If you're fishing like a a, a heavy grass line, or if you're fishing uh, open water where you're trying to pull fish up from 15, 20 feet, I'd go with that bigger 130. If I'm going to be fishing shallower areas, I'm going to go to probably to the 110. Um, that 110 has a good little gurgle to it, not too super loud, but just really nice. And I always swap out those hooks. They, they put like 12X hooks on there. I swap them out for Gamakatsu, 
round bin number threes. Uh, put them on front and back. I put a little feather and a little tinsel on the back just to give them a little extra something to look at. And then I also put an extra split ring on the back. You can see there's one and there's two. Two split rings and then that treble hook. Your hookup ratios are gonna be off the charts. Uh, as I mentioned, that Chapo is good. And that cha El Chapo or it kind of fills in, I call it El Chapo, it kind of fills in the gaps. It's a, They have a 120 and then they have a smaller one. It kind of fills in those gaps, which is cool. So now whatever size you really feel comfortable with or you get going with, you can throw that uh, as well. I think that Chapo might have a little more pop uh, with that because the 120 is a little bit bigger, but not quite a 130. The 130's got a ton of pop for the flopper, but that's number two. So my third bait, and I just I just brought the whole bag, or I got a missile bag full of flukes. That's right. There is no other than the original Zoom Super Fluke. Zoom Super Fluke is a bad dude. That's probably my favorite all-time color right there, the albino. Uh, love it. But here's here's a little tip. Every one of these that I get, I, I open the bag and then I shift them around so that they're all packed in there like a, um, like a carton of cigs. And they're all perfectly straight. And then I store them vertically like this. Not, I don't store them like this because then they're gonna get mashed back in there. So I store them upright. And as you can see, all of my, all of my bags are, are stored vertically like that. And then so when I pull, let's just pull another one out, some another color. So this is the watermelon gold glitter. And they're all, they're all gonna be straight. Now I'm gonna mash around and make sure they're all perfectly straight. But that's, that's what I do. Uh, that's one of the baits I throw. I usually throw that on a bait caster. 14 pound sunline shooter, uh, a spro swivel, and then about a 12 to 14 inch leader, five aught gamagatsu hook. Oh, I thought I had, I thought I had a, uh, one pre-made up in here. Here we go. Nope. What? They're empty. What in the world? Here we go. I'll have them pre-made just like this. Have the the little, the hook, that's the hook that I like. And then I'll put the, the swivel. I have a pre-made and I usually have a handful of them that I keep in this bag. So if I need to retie or I need to just, I want to pop on a fluke real quick, I don't have to tie all these knots. I just tie this one on. Then I put my fluke on there. And like I said, that, that albino is probably my one favorite color. Uh, white ice is hard, 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 hard to beat as well. Those two colors are really good. Any, any of the bait fish looking colors. I'm just looking through my colors to show you anything special. Um, one of them that I really like is straight black. Really like straight black, especially down in Florida. A lot of guys throw watermelon red. Uh, that straight black works on smallmouth up north as well. Keep that in mind. Um, but then you like watermelon, uh, watermelon seed, watermelon red. And here's another killer right there, watermelon candy. Watermelon candy is really good. I think that thing looks like a, a brim, but yet it's a fluke. So that is one that just kind of stays in my boat. Uh, that bag of flukes stays in my boat. Uh, I use it, I mean, anytime post-spawn is just primo, but there's times during the spawn that that thing can work. If they're feeding on shad or on the shad spawn, um, up north, works. it works great. Anywhere around edges of grass, shallow flats. Fluke is one of those, that's a, probably the number three. Uh, and, and it's one that I've been using like my whole career. So that's that's probably number three. And yes, there's a reason that I have not designed a fluke for for missile baits is because there I don't I don't find a need to yet. Uh, the fluke is just so simplistic and 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 clean and done done right and the action's just right. Of course there's ways we could modify it and make it a little bit different, but I haven't felt a need to do that just yet. But the uh, so I just have a bag of Zoom flukes over there. Uh, I don't hit up any buddies that I have over there and try to get any for free. Don't do that. I just buy them because this, these are the top three that I buy. Now I mentioned honorable mention two baits, one of which uh, I, I'm going to see how it goes going forward. But one of them is a 
Mega Bass 110 plus one. That is honorable mention. Number one, and this is a uh, beautiful color. Good gravy. That thing is just hot. Boy, tell me it is not. Because you're lying if you're not telling me that's a beautiful color. Um, this is a, I think it looks dead on a blue back heron. Uh, it's got that flash in the side and a little blue on the shoulders and the olive back. Uh, I love this color. Uh, and I can't tell you the Mega Bass name of the color. But the, the 110 plus one is one that I, I fished with this and caught a couple good fish in the Bassmaster Classic this past year with this bait because it gets down a little deeper and it has that hard sachet. I mean, it kicks a foot or two each way when you're when you're ripping it. And uh, the you know the Spro Mix Stick 110, fantastic jerk bait. It is different than a regular Mega Bass 110. I've explained that in other videos. That Mega Bass 110. It, it definitely sachets a little bit more. The the Spro McStick 110 has a tendency to walk on on itself a little bit more, almost like an underwater spook. It'll sachet just a little bit, but it's it's much more subtle. That is the I'm telling you that is the cold water jerk bait. If you're looking for a cold water jerk bait, that's the one. Uh, it does work in warmer water, absolutely. Uh, but the in the warmer water, I think that the Mega Bass 110 works. Um, that's kind of where it shines. Uh, of course, the Mega Bass 110 works in colder water, but this bad boy, I've caught him in really cold water. I've caught him in warm water. It's kind of all all over. But Spro has come out with a, a uh, mixed stick 110 plus one with a similar. It's different. It's a different shaped bill. A different little a little different angle. So I'm curious. I don't have one in my arsenal yet. I have not thrown it yet. I don't know how how good it's going to be for replacing this it may be an add-on just like the just like in the regular 110s the the mix stick is an add-on they complement each other very well i'm curious to see if the the mix stick 110 plus one is going to be a compliment like i said i don't even have one to show you uh, hopefully that i do um but that could be that could be one that maybe it replaces this i don't know but as long as they don't make this color, I'm going to probably have this color in my box if I'm going to a blueback heron lake. But the last but not least, honorable mention, these I have a whole bag of them. I wanted to show you this. And they have the little pliers. You have to get the pliers. And these are the VMC crossover rings. They are super slick. The little crossover rings, they're used for uh, putting on any stick bait, any bait you want, a Neko rig or wacky rig. That is the uh, the deal with that. I've shown, I've done videos on this before. Really slick. If you don't, if you not looked, look through my YouTube stuff, and you'll see where um, I talk about that VMC crossover ring. It's cool because you can hook it either way. You can hook it going along the length of the bait, or you can hook it perpendicular to the bait. I love, I love that aspect of it. I wish I had thought of that sooner, but those guys over at VMC, <laughs> they are tricky, and they come up with some good stuff as well. And that's one thing that I purchase and and buy on my own. Uh, so those are really the the top lures, top things that I the lures that I buy to compete with on the Bassmaster Elite Series. If you think I'm missing any, or if you think I'm just lying to you. Drop it down there in the comments. I'll be curious to see what you have to say. And like always, thank you guys for watching.